Hello everyone. Today we will continue our previous session which we were discussing about atomic nucleus radioactivity. In my last video, I have explained about radioactivity, its decay factors, emission of alpha, beta and the gamma rays and today we will discuss about nuclear fission and fusion reaction which is the second and the final part of your chapter radioactivity. So before I move to these two types of reactions, I would just like to give you some more examples on radioactive decay. Let's see some examples, then we will move to nuclear fission and fusion reaction. So let's see some examples. So before we uh, go ahead with examples, uh, let's first see to this note that when alpha uh, a particle is emitted from an uh, radioactive element say X, your mass number is reduced by 4 and atomic number is reduced by 2. And if beta particle is emitted, then the mass number remains same and the atomic number is increased by 1. And when there is a gamma particle emission, there is no change in atomic mass or atomic number. So, see the first example. A radioactive nucleus with um, radioactive nucleus X with atomic mass A and atomic number Z emits a beta particle and then an alpha particle to form an, another uh, element whose nucleus is of say Y with atomic mass P and atomic number Q. Now we have to find out the value of P, Q in terms of A and Z. Let's see how we can do it. See, the nucleus is X whose atomic mass is A and atomic number is Z. This is emitting a beta particle. Means here your atomic mass will remain same. Let this be X1. So it's since beta particle is emitted so the mass remains same but the atomic number is increased by one unit. Then again so it has a beta particle emission. Then again there is an emission of alpha particle. So when there is an emission of alpha particle the atomic mass is reduced by 4 unit and the atomic number which was Z plus 1 is reduced by 2 unit. Let this uh, particle be termed as X2 with an emission of alpha particle. Clear? So here what it remains? So this is what is your Y element with P and Q where P is equal to A minus 4 and Q is equal to Z minus 1. So therefore you have P is equal to A minus 4 and Q is equal to Z minus 1. Clear? Now see the next uh, fill in the blanks where it says that uranium which is whose atomic mass is 238 with 92 atomic number when it gets converted to thorium with atomic mass 234 atomic number is 90 that means there is a decrease of 4 unit in the mass number and 2 unit in the atomic number which is nothing but an alpha particle and in the second one from carbon whose mass is unchanged see it's 14 14 but the atomic number is increased here we see there is an increase in the atomic number so therefore this shows the emission of beta particle clear now moving to the third example here they have given that there is an atom say let it be X whose mass number is A and atomic number is Z so there is an emission of alpha particle that means its mass number will become 
a minus 4 and your atomic number will become z minus 2 with an emission of alpha particle which is nothing but an helium atom. Now from there so when an, this an alpha particle is emitted next what we will see there is an emission of gamma particle. So in case of gamma particle what we have seen that there is no change in the atomic mass or atomic number. So it remains same. Then there are two beta particles. Two beta particles are getting emitted. So in case of beta particle the atomic mass it remains same. But the mass number or the atomic number is increased by one unit. But here we have two beta particles. Therefore, it will be Z minus 2 plus 1 plus 1. So, therefore, that is equal to Z minus 2 plus 2 is equal to Z. So, here in case of X3, your atomic mass remains A minus 4 and atomic number became Z. Clear? Coming to the last example of this part, here we can see a lot of disintegration and a lot of uh, bro broken up things. Let's see this example in details. See, in the first part, what we are seeing that there from uranium 238, an element P is created. Here we will study or we will uh, also study the name of the elements that are being formed. Here there is an emission of alpha particle. That means the atomic mass will become 234. That means 238 minus 4 we will get 234 because there is an emission of alpha particle and in case of mass we will get 92 minus 2 that is equal to 90 clear from here a beta particle and a gamma particle so for the gamma particle there will be no change in atomic mass or atomic number but for the beta particle the atomic mass that remains same that is 234 as it was earlier and in case of atomic number it becomes 90 plus 1 is equal to 91. Next there is an emission of another beta and gamma particle. So when there is another beta and gamma particle so here the atomic mass again remains same with 91 plus 1 it becomes 92 for gamma particle there is no change from the next level there is a change in there is an emission of alpha particle that means again the mass will be reduced by 4 unit which becomes 230 and this becomes 92 minus 2 90 clear in the next level, there is an emission of alpha and gamma particle. So when there is an emission of alpha and gamma particle, for gamma particle, there is no change. But for the alpha particle, yes. So 230 minus 4 is equal to 226. And here, 90 minus 2 is equal to 88. In the next level, another alpha and gamma particle is emitted. So here also it will become 226 minus 4 is equal to 222 and here 88 minus 2 we will get 86. And finally from here only alpha particle is emitted. So here what we will get is 222 minus 4 that is equal to 
218 and here 86 minus 2 is 84. Clear? Any doubt? I hope you don't have any doubt. Now, what are the name of these particles? See, here the particle P that is formed that is nothing but its thorium. In case of Q, here the element formed is protactinum and then your element, this element R that is your uranium. From here the next element that is again formed is an isotope of thorium. Then here the element formed that is your radium and here 86 this atomic number this is your radon and lastly it is polonium clear let's move to the next part so you people have understood the examples of radioactive decay now let's move towards nuclear energy now a huge amount of energy is stored inside the atomic nucleus and this energy is called the nuclear energy now this energy that can be released by two processes one is nuclear fission and other one is nuclear fusion now the storage of this energy in the nucleus and its release from the nucleus uh, before we go ahead to this we will just discuss two quite important terminologies related to this part. First is mass defect and nuclear binding energy. Now what is mass defect? See the mass of an isotope of an element that is expected to be equal to the sum of masses of electron, proton and neutron present in it. But the actual isotopic mass of an element is smaller than the sum of masses of proton, neutron and electron present in it. Okay. So the difference between the sum of masses of electron, proton, neutron present in an isotope and its actual mass is called mass defect. Clear? Now the question arises where the mass is gone? If there is a difference then see earlier we have studied uh, in the law of conservation of mass that mass cannot be created nor destroyed. But in this case we are seeing that there is a slight difference in the mass. So where does this mass gone? Now Einstein has shown that the mass can be converted into energy according to the relation E is equal to mc square where E is the energy, m is the mass and c is the velocity of light. Now the mass which disappears during the formation of nucleus is converted into energy which is released. Now it follows an enormous quantity of energy that have been supplied to separate the nuclear particles. Okay. Now what is uh, what about the nuclear binding energy or rather uh, binding energy. See the nuclear binding energy is defined as the amount of energy released when a given number of proton and neutron combine together to form the nucleus or in other words we can say that it is the energy required to disrupt the nucleus into its constituent protons and neutrons. The greater is the binding energy, more stable is the nucleus. Clear? Now, uh, let's 
discuss about nuclear fission reaction in nuclear fission reaction uh, it is a process see this nuclear fission and fusion reactions in which we will broadly categorize in fission there is a disintegration of nucleus means the nucleus will be broken apart into many sub other particles or other uh, atomic nuclei and in case of fusion there will be a combination of the lighter molecules into a heavier atomic structure or the lighter atoms combine or fuse together to form a heavier atom in case of a nuclear fission reaction nuclear fission is the process in which a heavy nucleus splits into two lighter nuclei of almost equal size and releases an enormous amount of energy. So this was first uh, noticed by a German uh, chemist Otto Hahn and uh, F. Strassmann when they bombarded a uh, uranium-235 isotope with a slow-moving neutron. We'll study about the reaction and its uh, mass, how much energy is released and all in this diagrammatic way. And in case of fusion reaction, we'll see that the lighter atoms will be combining together. So before we move to the fusion, let's study the fusion reaction in a more detailed Let's see an example of a nuclear fission reaction in which we see that uranium 235 isotope is being bombarded with one neutron and it forms, it disintegrates and forms two smaller, rather smaller nuclei of barium and krypton along with three more neutrons is released with an enormous amount of energy. See how it happens. Here, when this neutron is bombarded to this uranium atom, barium krypton is formed. Along with it, three neutrons are released. Now, these three neutrons further hit or bombards the uranium atom and it again breaks apart into barium, krypton and with three more neutrons and it goes on like this. So this is an example of a chain reaction since it goes on and on. Clear? Now see how there is a change in the mass and what is the amount of energy released. So before the reaction occurs, if we see the mass of uranium-235, it is approximately 235.0439 atomic mass unit and the mass of one neutron is 1.0087 atomic mass unit. So its total is 236.0526 atomic mass unit. And on the other hand, after reaction, the mass of barium and mass of krypton and mass of three neutrons comes out around 235.8363 atomic mass unit and here the difference here we see a difference of around 0 0.2163 atomic mass unit this is what is the mass defect now one atomic mass unit is equivalent to 931 mega electron volt so the total amount of energy released is approximately if you multiply 0 0.2163 atomic mass unit with 931 mega electron volt you'll get around 201.096 mega electron volt so you can see from 235 gram of uranium about 200 mega electron volt is released this amount of energy can be released by combustion of about a few tons of coal so where a few tons of coal has to be burned to give out an amount of energy that can be obtained just from 235 gram of uranium from here you can see the huge amount of energy being released from a very small amount of atomic nuclei 
this phenomena of nuclear fission reaction was actually used in uh, making up of atom bomb which was dropped in um, during second world war in japan already you uh, you people have learned in your history and this uh, another very important use of these reaction is its use in nuclear reactors so in the nuclear reactors what are they they are that actually a device in which a controlled nuclear chain reaction can be initiated and sustained to produce energy see in this type of reactions you'll find that the reaction becomes uncontrolled it goes on and on so but in a reactor this has to be controlled so there is a they produce a steady flow of neutron generated by this reaction and they use this uh, and these are the these are actually used in nuclear power plants for the generation of electricity and uh, along with it there there are there are a lot of hazards also so special precautionary measures are taken in this nuclear power plants to avoid the uh, nuclear accidents so what is nuclear fusion reaction now nuclear fusion uh, is the process in which two nuclei of light atoms like hydrogen they combine to form heavy more stable nucleus with a liberation of enormous amount of energy let's see some examples of a uh, nuclear fusion reaction let's see the uh, three examples of nuclear fusion reaction first one you'll see here two lighter atoms of hydrogen they're combining together to form an helium atom with an amount with an enormous amount of energy which has been seen approximately 25.04 mega electron volt or in a second reaction you can see it's around to an another isotope of hydrogen whose mass is 2 and atomic number 1 and another isotope of hydrogen with mass number 3 which combines to form an helium atom with a production of a neutron and an amount of energy which is nearly 18.69 mega electron volt in another example in the third example what we are seeing over here there are four hydrogen atoms they are combining together to form an helium atom with two positrons and a huge amount of energy which is approximately 25.69 mega electron volt and this and pretty huge amount of energy is produced and probably this in stars suns it has been uh, assumed that this sort of reactions occur over there and in there is another use of this particular uh, nuclear fusion reaction where people have used it in making hydrogen bombs that are based on the principle of nuclear fusion reactions this bombs is much more more powerful than the atom bombs so if the fusion reaction can be controlled then the energy crisis will be met to a great extent but unfortunately till date its uh, control system has not yet developed in the laboratory so that it cannot be used in the nuclear reactors and another term that is associated with this nuclear fusion reaction uh, will be uh, knowing about it it's thermonuclear reactions now what is thermonuclear reactions fusion between two uh, various light atomic nuclei into a single heavier nucleus by a collision of interacting particles at extremely high temperature with the consequent release of a relatively large amount of energy is called thermonuclear reactions clear so you have understood about the nuclear fusion reaction but one thing you see that you great difference between fission and fusion in fission it was a chain reaction but fusion is not a chain reaction clear so you have understood the chapter
atomic nucleus, radioactivity, nuclear energy. And I hope that you people are studying at home and safe at home. In my next video, I'll come up with another topic from your syllabus. Till then, stay at home, stay safe.